So for case one, this is going to be a 68 year old woman with increasing weakness in the legs and fatigue. Show you some images from an MRI of the brain here. Just to let you know, this is a sagittal T1 here in the top left. It's a flare in the top right. These are pre and post contrast here at the bottom. You should try to get used to those, uh, figuring out which ones you're looking at, however. Here are just a couple of other images. These are both post contrast images. Just take a look at that, kind of figure out in your mind what you think that is. So your first question is which of these is not in the differential diagnosis? So I'm giving you some tumors and you might think about which one you don't think this would be. And your second question is about differentiating a subependymoma from an ependymoma. So you might think about what feature might one have that the other uh, has. And so is it a variable in diffusion? Is, is it that it's T1 bright? that it's T2 bright, that it lacks enhancement, or the location. So this case, you're looking really at a differential case. Uh, the differential is kind of broad. You can have ependymomas or subependymomas that look like this. Central neurocytomas can definitely look like this as well. Uh, subependymal giant cell tumors, uh, or SEGAs, or SEGTs, as they're sometimes called now, uh, common to tuberous sclerosis patients, choroid plexus papillomas, or choroid plexus tumors. Uh, hemangioblastomas and metastases are all in the differential for this, but it's more classic for one diagnosis and that's a subependymoma. Typically these are somewhat indolent. The symptoms may be related to hydrocephalus. So this patient definitely had hydrocephalus and the treatment is resection and the prognosis is good. Now the key feature that helps you in this case is that there's minimal enhancement on the post-contrast images. And so we'll take a look here. Uh, this is a pre and post contrast here. You'll see there's very little to minimal enhancement of that. That makes it much more likely to be a subependymoma than any of those other lesions. However, this remains a differential case. So I think it's pretty reasonable. Here you can see a little bit. I mean, these ventricles are far too big, even for someone in their 60s. Uh, so this person has hydrocephalus, which is probably what's causing the symptoms. Uh, this is a post-op follow-up. So they went in uh, through a ventriculostomy and uh, took a little piece of that to make a diagnosis. And uh, they'll probably just shunt the hydrocephalus for now. Uh, this is a relatively indolent lesion that doesn't have to be completely resected. Now your questions, uh, the first question was, which is not in the differential? Now this is definitely not a lymphoma. Lymphoma doesn't have this enhancement pattern. It's much more solid appearing and the location is not great. I've seen questions very similar to this on some of the uh, ABR examinations. So kind of differentiating between lymphoma and a central neurocytoma, they definitely want you to be able to do that. Uh, for your second question, it's asking what differentiates a subependymoma from a pendymoma. It's that lack of enhancement that we talked about. Subependymomas enhance significantly less than ependymomas. So if you see a non-enhancing ventricular mass uh, or mass along the ependyma, think about subependymoma.